and welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 128 or 129, somewhere in there, the Next Gen Podcast Talk. Uh, joining me right over here is Mr. Eric Moore. Hello. Nice to have him back. Uh, we uh, are now streaming on Twitch. So, uh, our podcast is now going to be live on Twitch every Monday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, and then it will be re-uploaded to YouTube the next day. Uh, so, that's just how we're going to do it now. So, YouTube will no longer have the live version. It'll have the version, the normal version that everybody else gets. Um, so, because of that, uh, we are instead going to focus on... Uh, growing our Twitch audience stream-wise and uh, let YouTube kind of be YouTube. We might stream occasionally over there, or at least I might, uh, with some other talky talk streams, or I might talk about why I'm switching to Twitch because I haven't actually announced that to the YouTube audience. Uh, but we're just going to keep this thing going and get right into it. And the first thing we start every single time with the Nintendo Prime Podcast is, what have we been playing lately? And there's only one other person on the podcast, so Eric, let's start with you. I am still playing Super Mario All-Stars, uh, Super Mario 64. Um, I think I'm up to 95 stars now, somewhere in that area. So, I'm rapidly completing that game way faster than, you know, I ever thought I would. But, uh, yeah, it's going, it's from there, and then it's going to, uh, it's going to be, uh, Sunshine after that, probably. Just work my way through the the All Stars game, nice. Um, I so is there anything else to be playing? Like anything in particular? Anything uh, you've even dabbled in? Indie game? No, or? honestly, no. What it's, about it's uh, you were playing? Been... What was it you were playing before? Oh, we were playing it. Uh, Crystal Chronicles. What happened? No, to that? I've, I haven't played since we played it. That honestly, that the fact that the multiplayer is so garbage and that kind of almost turned me off a little bit onto it. Uh, everyone, I know the volume's low. It's to prevent echo. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I, what have I been playing lately? Um, if you want, want a higher volume guys, by the way, you can rewatch this on YouTube tomorrow. I'll, I'll adjust all the volume. So what have I been playing lately? I have been playing, um, kind of a mix of things. I, 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 mean, I live streamed Fortnite the other day, so I kind of got back into that after a while. And actually it's kind of interesting what they're doing with Fortnite now. They've, they've got Marvel going on in it right now. Nice. So like you can go to Stark Industries and Iron Man what? is there, and like there's robots you can kill, and then take them over, and like make them part of your little army of dudes. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, and Iron Man kicks your ass. So <laughs> well, <laughs> don't, yeah. don't mess with Iron Man unless you're a pro. I ain't a pro. Um, but it's, it, I actually think it's kind of cool. It's probably the most fun I've had with Fortnite in the, in a couple of years. Uh, so I've been getting back into that. I know not everyone's into Fortnite, but it is what it is. Uh, I've kind of set 3D All Stars aside because I don't even know why I bought the game to be honest. Maybe it's just because of the hype, the nostalgia. It's just, like, I don't replay games. I just don't. Games I've already played and beaten a bunch when I I just don't go back and revisit them. That's just not who I am. Um, you know, like Breath of the Wild, I haven't touched that in like a year and a half. Like, I just, I don't really, I, I want to 100% it, but then I kind of lost my motivation because it's like I already know all this stuff. Like, if I'm going to 100% and I should have did it on my first playthrough. Um, so, it, then again, there wasn't Master Mode available right away. Yeah, there's that. Dang it, Nintendo. But I just, I don't well, you know. you got to make your money somehow. Yeah, I, I'm just not, I'm, I'm not a person, I don't even know why I bought it. Kind of a waste of money, to be honest. And I didn't even buy it physically, so it's not like I even have it as like a collector's item. I just don't have it. Um, but beyond that, I I kind of looked at um, some other games. Uh, I've been playing a little bit of Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. Nice. Um, still really fun. It's just as good as it was back in the day. It just still, I still want Zoo Tycoon instead, but yeah, you know, yeah beggars can't yeah. be choosers. You get what you get. Uh, it's still really good. Uh, beyond that, uh, I did dabble in um, some World of Warcraft because uh, I got the expansion pack, which doesn't come out. No, it's delayed. It was supposed to come out this month. Now it's not coming out to like November, maybe. But on the 13th, which I think is tomorrow, uh, they launched the new content patch that you can like get prepared for the next X pack. So we'll see what happens with that. World of Warcraft is still just as fun as it's always been. In fact, I almost appreciate it more now because it's definitely made for someone like me who's only going to dabble in it for like a couple hours a week. Yeah. Um, oh, and by the way, folks, I've been playing Madden 21 on my PC uh, on this giant 49-inch wide monitor, and I am i can't be beat now. I'm literally the best PC Madden player in the world. So um, uh -huh. I just did the suck it uh -huh. sign for those listening to the audio. Uh -huh. 
So, yeah, I've been, I've been kind of dabbling in a lot of different games instead of, like, focusing on one. Uh, maybe it's just because I don't have a massive single-player game that I'm, I'm really focused in at the moment. That's probably why. Because, uh, you know, I beat Luigi's Mansion 3. Um, I, I did that, like, a month ago. Yeah, what do you think of the ending? Uh, I like it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. I liked the whole game. I like. I, mean, I guess I, I almost. I, I don't know if I like it as much as the first. I like it way more than Dark Moon. The first game. The, the thing about the first game that's always going to stand out is the ghosts. The ghosts have like individualized like personality. There's just mm-hmm. a lot of variety. Not as much variety since then. Mm-hmm. But man, the gameplay, the story. I liked a lot about LM3. So yeah. It might be my favorite in like every aspect, but the unique ghosts that existed in one. So they could just like take those ghosts, put them in three. I do kind of like the boss ghosts though. Oh, the boss they, they ghosts! They were great. They, they were phenomenal. All the game. boss ghosts were great. Yeah. Um. So yeah, just I've been I've been dabbling in a lot of different games right now. As we're kind of like in between, I'm kind of waiting for the, I, I, like Age of Calamity. That's kind of like the game I, I, I'm waiting to come out right now. Mm-hmm. Um. And plus, you know, we have the next gen platforms coming. Um. That we're going to be talking about here next because. Uh, I'm kind of waiting for those too. Uh, I don't even know what I'm going to play first. Like Cyberpunk 2077 is coming out on like November 19th, and I think uh, Mark, you know, the guy who's the Mark Reamer who show up all the podcast stuff, um, he is like I guess buying me a copy for the Xbox Series X because nice. I have a Series X and Series S pre-ordered for some reason. What? Yeah, the X is paid off. Okay. Uh, the S is a hundred dollars down on it. Oh, okay. So I don't know. Do you want an S there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going to have an extra Xbox. Why would you? What? It, why? Well, do you have any of them pre ordered? No. Okay. Would you like an extra I mean, I wasn't planning on getting one, but. I mean, it's the yeah. S. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, if you don't have a 4K TV, you don't really need the X. Um, but, yeah, I, so I have that. And then a PlayStation 5, which I have pre ordered in Canada. What? So that's going to take like an extra month to get to me. <laughs> Wet. I suppose it's the only place you can find it. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. So it's going to take like an Fair extra enough. month of shipping to get to me. So I don't even know if I'm going to take that. I'm kind of hoping that Walmart's going to have some PlayStation 5s like there, and I can just like wait overnight or something. Because they're not going to do midnight. They're not open at midnight. Yeah, not anymore. Right Maybe now. they will for that. No, they're not going to open no. for that. No, no not for like no. five systems they might have, if they yeah, even no. have five. Right. So I don't know. It, it's kind of a cluster F right now. But um, speaking of the next-gen stuff, uh, I know you haven't been keeping that much up to date on next gen uh, because you were just, I don't know, you're not at a point in life that you really have to care about it. No, uh, you know, maybe the maybe once you get in the bachelor is pad. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, like if you get in the bachelor yeah. pad, you get some free time yeah, well, yeah. and you get your nice yeah. 4K, you know, big right. plasma OLED TV just rocking right. on the wall because you decided, you know what, I'm a baller like that and I dropped three three thousand dollars on a kick ass TV. Right. So, once I, can get, paid so off. I can get that uh, 4K, 4K, not gaming experience. NFL experience because right. certain yeah, right. providers you can get a 4K NFL experience from. Um, like when you get to that point, I think that's when you're going to be thinking about ah, maybe it's time for next gen, especially since yeah. so much stuff is cross gen. And I know right now, gaming wise, it's kind of like Switch or nothing for you right now. Yeah. Um, so let's talk, let's first let's talk about like the PlayStation 5, I guess, because that's the one that I think most people are interested in of the next gen systems. Mm hmm. Uh, so I don't know if you know this about the PlayStation Five. It's technically less powerful than the Series X. That doesn't surprise me. Um, well, PlayStation Four is more powerful than the Xbox One. Really? Yes. Okay. At launch. Okay. The Xbox One X is more powerful than the PlayStation Four Pro. Right. But it, it seems to be that going back in the past, though, that if I remember correctly, X- Xboxes generally tend to be more powerful than the PlayStation so counterpart. So how it's worked is the first Xbox is more powerful than everything at the time. Right. Xbox 360 technically was less powerful than the PlayStation 3. However, the PlayStation 3 used a really weird architecture mm-hmm. that like cell nobody processors that nobody used. used. And like 360 was using PC parts. So mm-hmm. games looked better on the Xbox 360 like right up until like the last 2 years. Uh, and those platforms were over like 7 or 8 years. So they were on the market a long time. So 360 games, like even multi-platform games, just looked better until the last couple of years when developers finally figured out how to use the dang PlayStation 3 stuff. Um, but technically, it was more powerful. And then PlayStation 4 was more powerful. Uh, but Xbox was like focused on weird things at the time. They had yeah. uh, like 
was it Dom Matrick in control, I think, and he was like talking about, oh yeah, we're going to be your center for all media. You can plug your cable box into us and watch your sports, and we're going to bring athletes out on the stage to talk about the sports TV experience. <laughs> At a time that cable TV, by the way, is going to the wayside, right. and people are getting their TV through streaming services, I mean, I still have cable because cable TV finally responded and said, hey, we can keep you by making it dirt cheap. No, no, thank you. That's the only way I'm going to have cable, so thank you. And it's nice to have be able to watch TV and not have to have my internet be active. Although it's really weird because isn't it all through the same cable line? Yeah, my internet will be up and my TV will work. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't understand it. It is yeah. what it is because I get everything from the same provider. Um, but yeah, so that's so we enter. This is the first gen in since the first Xbox where at launch the uh, system is going to just be the best, most powerful platform um, in terms of raw power have mm-hmm. faster clock speeds but see the thing is they're basically using the same parts but the xbox series x has faster clock speeds on the gpu and cpu uh the playstation 5 has a faster ssd now technically they're using the same gen 4 pcie ssd modules but the playstation 5 has a custom controller that's making them run at a much faster speed interesting um so it's so in theory playstation 5 exclusives should have way faster load times than xbox series x mm-hmm. uh so playstation 5 has like a, a an ssd advantage now we are hearing that they're only gonna have like 600 and this is like one of the bugaboos about the about the storage capacities so the Xbox, uh, or I'm sorry, the PlayStation 5 comes with like 850 gigs or whatever they're advertising on the box. But after you include the OS in it, they have like 660 gigs available. And next-gen games, like you want Modern yeah. Warfare, it's like 150 gigs. Yeah. So. You're going to need an external hard drive to do anything with it, basically. Or be able to crunch down that game to absolutely nothing in like a zip file some sort of something to compact that game down when you're not using it to here's, save memory. Here's the bugaboo. Yeah. You can't run games off external hard drives. What? You can't run PlayStation 4 games off an external hard drive. You can't run next-gen games off an external hard drive because they're not fast enough. Okay. So you need to buy an M.2 Gen 4 PCIe SSD expansion so what sony is doing that's different than xbox is they are allowing you to use virtually any gen 4 pcie uh m.2 straight up pc uh expansion drive so you can buy one of those that you would put on a motherboard and you can open up part of the playstation and and install it and get an extra terabyte two terabytes whatever the size limits are they have um and the thing is it's really expensive like there's been this knock on microsoft because they announced their expansion uh, with Seagate, like for a one terabyte, it's like two hundred and twenty dollars, um, which sounds really steep. But yeah. then when you actually look at the prices of M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, which is exactly what you have to buy for the PlayStation, they're just as expensive, if not more expensive in some cases. So this is kind of like the big bugaboo of the entire next generation is that these systems don't seem to ship with enough internal memory to play. To play more than a handful of games. Right. At most. I mean, there there's a real well, argument, like on the Series S, which, by the way, it's going to be smaller on this. The game's the files are going to be smaller on the Series S yeah. because it doesn't run at 4K. Yeah. But reality is, like, there's, like, a real prevailing thought out there that, like, you could get, like, three next-gen games with updates, like, on PlayStation 5, and then and be you're done. done. Yeah. Uh, and that's a real concern for some people that – don't want to shell out another 200 300 400 dollars they want two terabytes or whatever well, and, and that's storage. probably why the the uh, systems are the price that they are is because they they don't have the storage to they're planning on just making their money off the storage they're not planning on making the money off the systems i wonder how much money they're even going to make off the storage because oh i'm sure i'm sure sony's going to sell turn around and somehow sell um expansion cards well, they don't do expansion cards. It's literally an M.2. Like, it's a well, slot. You screw I'm it sure in just like a, no, like that's, a motherboard. No, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're going to they're gonna sell cards. I'm almost guaranteed. But you can use any PCI. You, you don't have to buy Sony-branded ones. You, some Sony people out there will buy Sony just because it's Sony. Well, it's just like Nintendo has uh, right. Nintendo-branded microSD cards, but you can right. use any microSD card. But I don't think like Sony's going to make a ton. No, Xbox, they, theirs is proprietary. 
Um, so they're they're literally like using old school, like you know, you like you put a memory card in. It's like that, but it's clearly an, a, a freaking PCIe Gen Four card, but it's like mm-hmm. a custom form factor. Mm-hmm. Um, now they're not going to make money off it, but I always wonder like. If on their own they cost two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars for an extra terabyte just to buy one for your computer, then like, how much money are they really making on these things when they're charging market value that everyone else is charging? Unless this could be that this is something to consider. That might be what market value is, but maybe the profit margins are massive. Right on that market value. Right. So I don't know. It's and that that would be my guess. Honestly. Yeah. Is that they're they're planning to make their money on on storage versus the the systems themselves? Yeah, like I I think they I wish they would have. My thing is I wish they would have included two terabytes. Yeah. Now you're not going to get a full two terabytes, right, guys? So you're going to have oh, OS right. to consider, and then SSDs need uh, space for redundancy. If you don't have the space for redundancy, they bog down and they just like stop running. It's not good. You need the redundancy space, uh, which is why, by the way, like. If you look at the PlayStation 5 and they say 850 gigs, it's actually a one terabyte drive in there. But they are eliminating the space that you need for uh, redundancy. So 150 gigs or so for redundancy, then the OS on top. Uh, when Xbox Series X is advertising one terabyte to you, that's because they actually included 1.2 terabytes and that two terabyte and the 200 gigs there they're using for their redundancy, giving you that full terabyte, but then you get their OS on top of that to knock it down to 800 or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's, I, I don't, I, th- this is like the biggest bugaboo that really this entire next generation has for me. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, even the Series S, they didn't include two terabytes. When everything's all said and done, it's about it would have been about one point five terabytes available in each one. Mm-hmm. That that would have been plenty. I, right. I feel right. like to, at least for starting out, like most people can do that. They can archive games that you can on Switch or whatever. Yeah, no one wants to re-download hundred plus gigabytes. Which one thing I, I this this is one aspect I'm not sure about on PlayStation Five yet. On Xbox Series X, you can offload your uh, Series X games to an external hard drive. And then transfer them back in later to play. So that's right. one way where like you can kind of use cheap storage so you don't have to re-download. Yeah, yeah. And 3.1 USB transfer fees are actually pretty fast. Right. Uh, but, but I'm pretty sure that Sony's going to support that too. I have a feeling if it yeah, hasn't been announced yeah. yet. But then that leads me to my next question is, is SSDs only have limited number of rights. I know it's, it's quite a bit. It's a lot. But... but and the Gen 4 ones are even higher. But, but but if you're constantly offloading and reloading games, how long is that going to last you? I mean... Not even that. Like, just installing games, period. Updates. updates every, I mean, anything, every, every time anything. you use the SSD and you write to it. Yeah. Or read from it, technically. Like, anytime you just use it. Uh, and I've been wondering that, too, because, like... I have a I have an old school SATA SSD that my computer runs off of, and I know it's degrading, and I know because I wiped it, and it's running slower than it was when I bought it by significant margins, uh, to the point that I need to start thinking about replacing it before I lose my data, um, and like now I've had this for like four years, and that's great, but does that does that mean like the lifespan of this is going to be four years? Um, right. Because one thing that people are worried about this generation because of SSDs is are we going to not be able to keep our games long haul? We've never had, like, we could fire up a PlayStation 3 still. We could fire up an NES and, play, mm-hmm. and still play games. And I, OG Xbox still play games. Yeah, the hard drives fail. Fine. They, they do fail, but you can easily replace them. The memory on these platforms is literally soldered onto the board. These aren't replaceable SSDs. They're soldered onto the board, which means when they fail, they fail, and you have to buy a new system. Either you're going to have to buy a new board or somehow if you're, I guess, technically sound where you can peel it off and resolder something on there, maybe? But <laughs> That's assuming that the chips are resolderable. Right, you can right, 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 right. Plus, no, you have for to get sure. the OS booted on it. Right. No, for sure. But, like, I... The fact that they that they soldered them on, I thought was uh, I get why they did it. You want to maximize speed speed to solder them on, right? But if they had just went with like an installable M.2, when it dies, you could just replace it. Like yeah, it'll still be expensive, but you could replace it. You can copy your data and replace it. Yes, and potentially, 
I, I think one way that I feel like what these systems are going to do long haul is uh, eventually they'll let you offload the OS and everything to the to the expansion drive on Xbox or the expansion M.2 on PlayStation 5. I think that is a, a workaround they could do that they're not going to do now, but say like two and a half, three years from now, if people notice slowdown with their SSDs, they're going to be like, hey, look, we we are offering this program now. If you have an ex, if you if you install the new M.2 or you have one of those plug and play uh, Xbox Series X uh, memory modules, like hey, you can offload everything to that now, and maybe that's their way to combat it. Yep. But you're also going to have to then. But then you're adding additional cost. For not people. just that, but then you also have to tell it to boot from your new mm. your new hard drive. And that would be an update. Like that's right. the only way. That that that's that's the only way. Like. <sighs> Yeah, I find it interesting. Like RAM has been soldered on forever, right? And yeah, RAM, RAM also it's flash. It technically can run out too, but RAM is is designed in a way where you can almost run that stuff forever. You like even the stuff that's you know when you have the the, the plug plug and go sticks. I mean, people still have really old school computers still running DDR2 RAM sticks. Like yeah, like RAM sticks. RAM lasts a hell of a long time. I mean, heck, the crap for the NES is soldered on, and that stuff still runs. <laughs> right. So like RAM RAM is less of an issue versus actual storage uh and i'm I, I am very concerned that the lifespan of these systems isn't going to be much more than five or six years now i know there are some people that run ssds for like a decade but they might not care about the slowdown and they might not care like they're not playing games necessarily right and if it's competitive games online you need that speed mm-hmm so my only, I think the only solution they really have is that they have to eventually let you offload the OS and everything onto the extra drives. That is one way to combat it. It's just an expensive way. But I guess it's just it's akin to replacing your drive. But the problem is, with that then, is are people going to offload it before the drive fails? Right. Most people don't replace the hard drive until it fails. Right. Well, I mean, once it fails, it's too late. Mm-hmm. With a, the, it's, a, it's gone. So. Yeah, it's... There's nothing to offload. As far as we know, you can't download the OS online. So, <sighs> I don't know. It, it's a it's a little. It, I'm sure I'm sure it was also a cost saving measure. To be honest, like what, what I always found interesting about the Switch, and no one talks about this, uh, the Switch's memory module is separate from the main motherboard. So if it fails, okay, replace it. The problem is. That, that motherboard and that memory module are keyed. So you can't plug in any other memory module with that board. It has to be the same one. So it's kind of like the same problem. Yeah, that's weird. So even though it's separate, it doesn't really matter. They're treating it like it's not separate. Jeez. Yeah, right? Like, at first I thought nice maybe that design was because they wanted to have it separate because eventually they were going to release bigger, like, you know, go from 32 to 64 to 128, offer different sizes. So yeah. they just created a one-fits, one-fits-all size board. And yeah. then, you know, but they right, never right. did that. At least they haven't done it yet. Right. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of an pro- issue with all three of them, to be honest. You know, we, we haven't talked about this issue with Switch because you can offload your games to, to a micro SD card and run them right off the micro SD card. But, you know, so I guess people consider it less of an issue because of that. But what's going to happen when they don't make Switches anymore and, you, and all the memory modules inside the Switches die? As far as we know, you can't offload the OS and run it off the SD card either. Yeah, it's not like a, it's not like back in the Game Boy day where you just replace a battery in the game in the cartridge and you're basically back to being good again. Yeah, like, yeah, your memory's wiped, but yeah, and, it, you, you got a basically a brand new game. Yeah, I mean the Switch is hacked, so it's not like you can't. People can save their game files, but running them natively on a Switch once the memory module dies is going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. Um, I know that people can like, you know, try to get it to run off SSDs and run hacked firmware and stuff, but like that's that's diving into a realm that we don't have to dive into with any other system. You want to play Xbox games? Go plug your Xbox in and play them. You know, if the hard drive die, plug a new hard drive in, and you know you can literally get the you can still get the OS installed on that hard drive and still play OG Xbox the way it was meant to be played. Same with the net, the NES, the SNES, the PlayStation One. You can go. You don't have to hack these platforms to still play them today. Mm-hmm. That's like the big thing. With with these with all this flash and the super fast memories that eventually the switches the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X and S the internal memory module is going to basically die one day and when that happens there is no way currently to replace those memory modules to play the system as it was originally built you you'll have to hack them and and hodgepodge things together 
and it's 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 kind of it's a pain, right? right. It's a pain in the ass, um, and it is a concern for next gen. Um, but yeah, what are you gonna do? There's what are you gonna nothing. do? We're we're getting the most expensive generation we've ever had. It's, it's not a PC. I mean, uh, as much as we want to say, this, game PC. prices are going up to seventy bucks. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I knew this was coming I mean, at some point. Games haven't gone up in a long forever. while. I mean, they, people people are like seventy dollars. I'm like, dude, I remember back in the N64 and NES days, paying like 120 bucks for a game. Like, dude, game prices were all over the place growing up for me. Yeah. In the 90s, early 2000s, we didn't have the set standard sixty dollar price. So some games were 100, some games were 20. Like, yeah. It was crazy all over the place. You can argue it's that way now. Some games are 60. You can get an indie game for free. Right. Like it's right. all over yeah. the pricing scales all over the place now. But like it always oh the top end sixty unless it's a collector's edition or yeah. okay, well yeah, but a lot of these sixty dollar games have DLC now, have microtransactions. By the time you're all done playing the game, you yeah, might have spent two hundred dollars anyways. Yeah, right. Right, exactly. So the price of games is gonna go up eventually, but I think what what's upsetting some people is the price of games is going up, but we know the practices aren't going to change. So people oh, no, will be like, sure. Oh, we'll pay a hundred bucks for a game. If it doesn't have DLC or microtransactions. Oh, it's going to have DLC and microtransactions either way. Guarantee it. There's too much money in it. So, like, they're just charging you more money because they can. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, like, and, and this is really weird, too, because we're ch- charged 70 bucks for games at a time when Xbox is doing game streaming and making gaming cheaper than it's ever been. Right. So now the combat is, oh, if you are going to buy an individual game, you got to pay more. That Well, geez, that makes... Doesn't that drive people to subscription services? Right. Right. I mean, EA well, and maybe maybe that's the way they're trying to to set up their streaming services in the future. Like, did, did you mean, know this? Did you know this? EA Play is now part of Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, yeah, I think you told me so that. So, like day one, you bit. could pl- like brand new EA games day one on Game Pass without paying any more than you already pay for Game Pass. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. So now you get all that. They just bought Bethesda. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? They bought Zenimax, to be fair, which which is the company that owns Bethesda. Yeah. So Elder Scrolls what, and all Microsoft those games. Did? Yeah. What? Yeah. So all those Damn. games. Yeah. So all those games. Seven point yeah. five billion, by the way. Jesus. Um, all those games are going going on Game Pass too. So like, the more expensive this stuff comes, the more like it's like you guys should almost go Xbox or at least a PC or something that plays right. Game Pass right. because. Right. Uh, that yeah, it's the only way you're going to be able to afford a game next gen. Right. <laughs> well, you know, and I'm not trying to knock Sony. It's not like this is just the reality of the situation. They're going with cutting edge technology, but, which is really expensive, and it's not going to get any cheaper anytime soon. I mean, to be fair, Sony is going against like a PC company. Let's let's face it, Microsoft is a PC first company. But Sony owns the market. P- like it's like Microsoft is so far behind. Yeah. Like, they don't even care about how many systems they sell. They want more people on Game Pass and xCloud. Right. So, like, Game Pass has, what, 10 million, I think they said, or maybe it's 12 million now subscribers. They want to see that up to 30, 40, 50. Right. I mean, because of the fact that they are a PC company allows them the ability to not care to a certain extent because they have the mass audience of PC. Yeah. And, like, they have the PC audience, and then on top of that xCloud is, is like in beta on Android right now. And you could pair like Game Pass with xCloud, so then you could start playing these games without even owning top of the line hardware. So it, it's an interesting situation where Microsoft has these next gen platforms and they're trying to do their best with them, but they also technically don't need them, if it makes sense. Uh, and then you have Sony, he's like, hey, we're just going to do what we always do, except right. pr- game prices are going to go up by 10 bucks. We're just going to keep yeah. doing what we always do. And hey, we hey. sell 100 million units right. every generation. Exactly. Why There's would nothing we stop? wrong with it. Why would we stop doing what we always do? People put up with it. Yep. No. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, there's even a rumor out there that, like, like Xbox might stop charging for Xbox Live. Really? Why? They get more people onto their platform to get subscribed to their other subscription service. Yep, there's like, that. Well, look, if we drop one of the three, why wouldn't you come over to us? Now you don't have to pay to play online. Oh, and you might as well grab Game Pass while you're here because, goddamn, it's the best deal in gaming. And, right. heck, oh, geez, you want to take that game and seamlessly transition it over to your phone? Well, you might as well get X Cloud as well. Boom! Now we have the Nintendo Switch because you can play your Xbox games anywhere. Yep. Granted, it's not yeah. going to work as well over here. Like, right. Even if you have 5G, 5G connections are very unstable. So, like, it's not going to be that. It's not going to be seamless like like with Switch. Oh, and you're right, going to require right, but... internet. And yeah, okay. But the point, like, it's, it's it the doesn't closest really thing compete. that's going to get to Switch. Yeah, it, it doesn't technically competing directly but the point is that that's microsoft's whole strategy is 
everyone can play our games and they can play them for really cheap, which should get us hundreds of millions of consumers. And yeah, if you want, if you want to own your games or if you want to play them on local hardware, we offer that too. And that's just an option in the Xbox product stack rather than a you need to buy this to play our games. Like, no, you don't. Right. No, you don't. You don't have to buy an Xbox to play Xbox games. Like that's 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 their future right now. They right. they are just spreading their net really wide and saying everyone come to us. We don't care what you play on. Yep. I mean, it's gonna be crazy if a day arrives. Can you imagine, like in twenty twenty two, X Cloud comes to Switch. Right. <laughs> to the next gen Switch. Like, oh man. That would be crazy. Jeez. Like, hello. Why buy Xbox at that point? Give me the damn Switch. I'll just freaking play all my Nintendo and Xbox games there, man. Right. Damn, give me that Xbox Cloud and Game Pass. Oh, man. Right, that right. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. That would be ridiculous. Now, obviously, there's limitations right now to what Xbox is doing. Like, their Game Pass. Right now, everything that you can play that's possibly on Game Pass right now can only be played on Xbox systems. Uh, the PC version of Game Pass doesn't have everything. Obviously, yeah. the mobile version of Game Pass doesn't have everything. But... I, I think it's one of those things that it'll get there. Oh yeah, it's gonna take time. Yeah, it'll take time. It'll it, it'll get there. It started as an Xbox thing, so it's gonna it's gonna get there over time. Because um, you know it's not like these games can just snap and be instantly ready on all these platforms. Or will it? Are we gonna run into a Nintendo uh, online X-Cloud. service? Uh, run into a what? <laughs> Nintendo online service. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get you some NES games and some SNES games, but uh, hey, they gave us Mario Thirty Five. That's pretty good. Well, there's that. It's fun. But <laughs> you know, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I know. What you're saying. It's. Are we gonna? Is it gonna end up like that? Yeah, we'll get it. To, we'll get it to you when. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's gonna be interesting to see how that's handled. And then, like Sony, you know, one thing Sony has going for them, you know, because we, we we kind of talked about like some of the pitfalls of what they're doing with this next gen hardware. Um, I mean, heck, you know, um, if you just want to look at just you know how they're handling the heat off these big things, like, dude, the PlayStation Five is using liquid metal. Did you ever think you'd see a console what? using liquid metal to transfer heat to the heatsink? That's crazy. Yeah, they're using liquid metal. And that's another thing. Liquid metal on a system usually only has a shelf life of like two years before it gets hard and needs to be replaced. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. So then, yeah. Like, uh, it doesn't bother me. I'll take apart my system. And like, like, but what happens if you use normal thermal paste on it? Like, is it, does it overheat? Is that why it uses liquid metal? Because the thermal paste doesn't conduct the heat good enough and the cheat. I, yeah. You know, I'm kind of. Yeah. Do I downgrade my PlayStation 5 at launch and, like, take off the liquid metal and put on normal thermal paste just to see what happens? Just to see what happens. Just to, just yeah. to see what happens. Just to see what happens until you blow, you know, I fry blow, the whole thing. Blow up my whole house. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, like, the thing is, like, the PlayStation 5 runs hottest between the two systems despite lower clock speeds. Um, supposedly, that that's the report out there, that it, that it runs the hottest. Like, despite lower clock speeds, despite liquid metal heat transfer, and despite a massive heat sink that's, like, this big. Juice. Like, and the biggest console of all time. I mean, the system's, like, massive. It's, like, this yeah. It's huge. Good God. Like, despite you have the biggest console of all time in terms of actual size and weight and the biggest heat sink and liquid metal and blah, 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 like, it still runs hotter than the Series X, which is smaller, more compact, with higher clock speeds, a smaller heat sink. Well, it, it looks like they were trying to design it around Aesthetics. keeping heat. No, keeping, no, keeping heat. Well, no, sorry, Xbox. From what I was reading, it looks like they were designing it around making the heat be, like, the same throughout the whole entire system. Yeah. So you don't have one hot spot versus, you know, you have one major hot spot and then the rest of it kind of just is not very hot. I mean, from what I saw, they had the split split motherboard. They got the, you know, like a mass air chamber from what I was seeing. I mean, it looks like it was designed to cool. Yeah, well, remember they had the red ring of death issue on the 360? Right. Like, yeah, massive overheating problems. They don't ever want to see that happen again. Um, PlayStation 4 Pro sounds like a freaking jet engine taking off. So yes. they're trying to like, we want a good noise profile, we want good heat dissipation, and we want our hardware to last, you know, as long as the SSDs are going to last. Cool. So they're not using liquid metal, yet they're coming in at lower at lower uh, temperatures on faster clock speeds. And I think a lot of it's the design. So I watched the teardowns, right? Like they, the Xbox teardowns have been out there forever. Uh, Sony just posted the PlayStation 5 teardowns last week. And like... If you look at the teardowns, you can tell which company knows what the fuck they're doing when it comes to, like, airflow and which company has no goddamn idea. Like, people, when, when they watch that PlayStation 5 teardown, they're like, oh, man, look at that massive heat sink, man. Look at how awesome Sony is at dissipating heat. And I'm like, 
Okay, but the heat sink's over here. The fan's up here. Yep. Okay. Now, for the fan's air to escape, because it's pulling it in from the vents in the back. For the fan's air to escape, it's got vent holes up here and vent holes up here. But the fan isn't facing up and down. So it can't blow out both vent holes. It can only blow out the vent hole the fan is facing, which means the other right. vent hole is nothing but aesthetics. Yeah. So you have these little tiny vents like this for air to blow out. You have, Basically, there is not equal air pressure. It can bring more air in than it can blow out at once, which is why it's hotter even though it's yeah. running. No, that makes that, sense. That's exactly – like I literally saw it. I posted it on Twitter, and people were getting all pissed at me saying, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, dude, I've been building PCs forever. I know how airflow freaking works. Right. This is horrible design for airflow. Like one of the worst console designs I have seen for airflow ever. To have this massive fan – but literally, you're cutting off half of its ventilation to blow air out. I, and even then, I'm not even sure if there was enough total ventilation compared to the intake. Like, if you look, Microsoft has all these holes in the back and then all these holes on top, and they have holes on the bottom. So they have massive intake and a giant fan at the top. Just basically, there's there's blowing you know, just blowing out like crazy. Yeah. Like if you look at the top, those holes are massive. They didn't even, they didn't even put dust filters in. That's a whole other thing we can talk about. There's no dust filters. Uh, okay, so like, that's a, uh, like yeah. like that's great for airflow. <laughs> yeah. You also got to dust your fucking system. Out right, that. right. Which whatever. I mean, that doesn't bother me. The average consumer it might bother, but um, I don't know. The air, it, well, dude, the air holes remember. are so big. You probably could just fit the can of air in the holes. <laughs> you probably don't even have to open it. Dude, right. They're huge. So like. I, I knew that airflow was, was was an issue with the PlayStation 5. So that, I mean, granted, that's probably why they went with liquid metal. They wanted maximum heat transfer. Like, I guarantee you guys, the size of that heat sink is, like, 50% of the heat dissipated from the system has nothing to do with the fan. Because there's not air flowing over parts of the heat sink. So, that's why it runs hotter. Now, granted, when we talk hotter, the temperatures of these systems aren't anywhere close to delta. Which Delta is like where you have to worry about hardware failure. Yeah. Uh, I think they said 65C was the max it was hitting, or 66C was the max it was hitting with the PlayStation 5. That's not very hot. Um, I mean, it's 149 degrees or whatever Fahrenheit. Like, it sounds hot. But, I mean, God, my, my GPU, you know, hits like freaking 87C under load. Like, it, it's not that hot compared to gaming PCs. Mm. So it's actually doing, like, none of, none of the systems are going to have heat problems or overheating problems. As far as we're aware, I'd like to see it tested out in Arizona with 115 degree heat, you know, right. no AC. Right. right. And then see what it can do when it doesn't have, like, in Wisconsin, why would I have issue? Even in the summer, we run our air conditioner. So, yeah. like, yeah. I want to see what it does in a real world situation where someone doesn't have AC. They live in a high dry heat area. Or even maybe even you know down in the freaking equator where it's you know wet heat like well, how, how's yeah. it gonna yeah. do right you know and 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 that's another thing that I, I I don't think has been discussed as well there there's no dust filters and there's such big intake holes what happens in high moisture air yeah I don't know that's you know on a lot of PCs we have filters that they don't necessarily get rid of all the moisture per se but a lot of the bigger moisture droplets that you can like feel in the air when it's really like you, you don't get that in your PC because it's caught in the filter. You know, there's been times I've taken the filters off. My filters are kind of wet, but the inside is dry. Yeah. And these don't have filters on. So that's in a whole, like that's a whole other, like where, where, have we seen testing conditions that deal with certain real world situations that I personally am never going to run into, but uh, other people will. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I run a dehumidifier in my basement. And if you actually don't be, so. remember to blow your system out because you know, well, most people don't. Most people don't. And like another thing too, like I, I was thinking about this too on the Xbox Series X and the, and the PlayStation Five. So like PlayStation Five is kind of like bigger slits at the top, going like this. Mm-hmm. The PlayStation Five is the bigger holes. You know, like cockroaches can fit through those pretty easy. Well, they they already fit through. I, mean, everything. I was gonna say cockroaches, yeah, cockroaches are already cockroaches in the other everywhere. ones. So yeah. Like, but like one thing that that you don't see in PCs is cockroaches usually, because they can't get past the filter. Right. There is that. So that's another thing too. Like, have they ever thought of, hey, we could solve the cockroach problem if we just put filters on our all our intakes? But yeah. we don't want to ruin airflow. Put better fans in. Right. One thing I don't understand, like these these consoles are so powerful. Why don't they have a fair uh, a fan at the intake and the outtake? Right. I mean, it's not like we care. I mean, about the PlayStation power. Five is massive. You can't tell me they couldn't fit another fan in there, like a little a little seventy millimeter down there going. Ee. I mean, it's not like we care about power. We can power the crap. You know what's, you know what's going to happen. This, this might be the first gen that it might make a difference if you buy one of those external fans that you connect to the vent to blow yeah, up. Right? Yeah, right? <laughs> like, yeah. is it going to matter? <laughs> oh, God. 
like I kept thinking, like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't know. Th- this is an interesting generation, but the reason to still be excited about PlayStation 5 is the same reason to always be excited about it, and that is games. Oh, yeah. So, at launch, it's got one big exclusive game you can't get anywhere else unless you buy a PlayStation 5, and that is Demon's Souls Remake. Looks really, really good. It's like the only game that actually looks next gen because pretty much all of the games are cross gen, so nothing quite looks super next gen but this game. Uh, but if you don't care about Demon Souls, I mean Miles Morales is going to be on PlayStation Four, so you don't have to buy buy a PlayStation Five to play it. All the other games that are on PlayStation Five will be on PlayStation Four. Even even the new Horizon game, Forbidden West, that they had all this big stuff for, it's going to be on PlayStation Four. Uh, and I, that used to be like a big fight like a year ago because Xbox said, "Hey, our game's going to be cross gen for at least a year or two. And PlayStation's like, "Ha, we're going to have real exclusives." Okay, you have one. Yeah. So the rest are cross gen. <laughs> Yeah. Like, like okay uh there's gonna be more like they, they've locked in exclusives for like final fantasy 15 or 16 sorry 16 um you know obviously microsoft fire oh you got final fantasy 16 yeah we got bethesda um <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah <laughs> so uh microsoft's eventually gonna have some nice you know quote-unquote exclusives because they'll also be on pc and xcloud um but yeah it, it's gonna be a fun it's gonna be a fun generation this is before we even talk about switch pro yeah, right. Like, the, like, to, like I think at launch on Xbox, there's one game that's kind of sort of worth getting it for if you're really into it. I think it, it, I think they're getting uh, Gears Tactics at launch for for, which for, one? for, for Xbox. Sorry, for oh, Xbox. Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Because Gears is owned by them. Well, right. Um, and I think like that's the one reason to get Xbox, but like none of the preview units have it yet, so like no one's really playing it to really know. Right. Um. And we'll get into some of the some of the other features here in a moment, but I want I want to switch switch gears a little bit to Switch Pro. So well, there's smoke, there's fire. Like Switch Pro, everything's pointing to it coming next year, whatever it is. Like, okay, so we kind of have some information on these next gen platforms. What's this have to do to keep Switch relevant enough? Mm-hmm. Like, what's it have to do? Like in your mind, you're thinking, okay, Nate, you're, or you're gonna hand me an Xbox Series S. Cool. All right. Well, damn. What does Switch have to do to compete with that? Go. What would you like it to do? You have a Switch. Oh, I, what would yeah. you like them to do to make Switch better? To be more modern, I guess. To be more modern. Yeah, I mean, battery life is always a big deal. So if you can get longer battery life, 8, 10 hours, I mean, that's going to be a lot of battery. But, you know, if you can get the, the longer battery life, for sure. Um, better screen, obviously. I mean, just... I mean, I don't say you have to go up to 4K because that would be absolutely ridiculous um, to expect that. I mean, if you can do it, fantastic. DLSS 2.0. Right. If you can do it, fantastic. If you can't, well, I'm not expecting that. Um, but, you know, up, up, up your graphics, up your up your battery life. I mean, battery life is huge, honestly, um, for me. Because if I want to take it and go, you know, I don't want to play it. I want to I take it and go. I don't want to, you know, the three-hour battery life, It's it's that's a good chunk of time, but... You know, if I'm in a 13-hour car ride, three hours is only three hours. I'm, you know, got a three quarters of the time left to go without my switch, unless I stop somewhere to or have, you know, the converter to charge it. Or, but on my shelf over there, a product I'm gonna review. You have the HyperX battery extender. <laughs> I've, I've tried I it yet though. Six thousand milliamp hours thing down there. I st- Still don't know if I trust plugging anything that's not Nintendo into a, into the Switch, because it's. I mean, honestly, with the breaking before it, I don't I trust guess anything. Fixed, hey. I, I don't know. I'll say this. I I don't believe a cus- a, a, a company that says. What? I, I don't believe a company that says Joy-Con drift wasn't a, wasn't an issue after they had already admitted Joy-Con drift was an issue. That's a legal argument. They have to say it. I they realize that, it. but. No. They have, they have to say it while they come up with a real legal argument. They had to throw something out there. <laughs> they stall, had to, stall they had tactic, stall. They had to respond when they don't have a response yet. Like, Nintendo's got to have time to be like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's an issue, but, like, we're, we're fixing it. Don't worry about yeah. it or something. They, right. Anyways. But, um, yeah. Sorry, I had to throw that dig in there. I love Nintendo, but come on. Joy Country. Fake news. Yeah. Fake news. No. Um, honestly... I, I'm just, um, I, I think that, you know, as long as they get rid of the bezels, go as a 1080p screen. Right. Yes. Uh, fixed Joy-Con drift, of course. Yes. Um, 
So give us better Joy Cons with a better kickstand, and then they just up, yes. up, up the power some. Like make it so like we're at least getting 720p on our handheld. I'm good. Like I I know I want like DLSS 2.0. I want 4K. I want I, I want them to go like balls to the wall go for so it. we could get all of the next gen games on Switch. I just think. We're not going to get that till 2022, 2023. And yes, I realize by then we're going to be talking about, you know, the PlayStation 5 Pro and stuff like that. But I, it, it's, I just don't think that Nintendo, it, it doesn't go along with Nintendo's MO. Then again, Nintendo has a new president, Shintura Furukawa, who's nothing like Satoru Iwata. And very much, much could be like, hey, I'm a businessman. This Switch thing's great. Why don't we ride this bad boy? Let's release a new Switch every two to three years. Let's just right. keep pumping this bad boy out, and let's just keep ma- having 100 million user base all the goddamn time and give them powerful hardware. If they don't want to buy it, everything still works in the OG Switch, so who cares? Right. You, you, give, them, you give them just enough power to buy the new one, but not the full, full, full-edged. Yep, until the next one after that. And then it's right. backwards compatible with, with the one they released before, right. but not right. the OG. Like, right. It's the phone model. Right. And Nintendo's perfectly set up to do the phone model. Yes, yes, they are. My thing is, and I'm, I'm only going to say this once because maybe this is a crazy opinion. No, it probably is. Nintendo Switch, I don't think Nintendo has to do anything. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're probably not wrong. If you want next-gen third-party support, they have to do something, right? They have to. But at the same point, I did a poll recently on my channel. But I'm gonna I'm gonna load that poll up on my end right now so I can get the exact figures. I did a poll, um, and I asked people, you know, what sort of games do you play most often on your Switch? And I and I put up, you know, Nintendo slash Switch game exclusive games, so even if it's third party exclusives, uh, AAA multi platform games, indie games, or I don't own a Switch. Okay, only three percent of people say they 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 most often play AAA multi platform games. Now this is out, out of about six thousand seven thousand votes. So not a small sample size. Bigger sample size than, than is going out there saying, PlayStation 5 is 80% of next-gen console sales when they pulled 511 people and only 74 of them pre-ordered a next-gen system. <laughs> so it's like such a small yeah. data set to be like, oh, but this is what's happening in all of the United States. It's like right. 74 people. That's your, that's your baseline. Okay, I got more in this poll. <laughs> right. So, right. Okay. Anyways, so not a small sample size. 89% of people who responded in the poll said they primarily play Nintendo slash Switch exclusive games. And I think if you polled the 100% of the Switch audience, if, you, if it was impossible to do that, you would find the numbers would be probably 80% or higher that people primarily play Nintendo slash Switch exclusive games. So how important are third-party games really to Switch, the AAA ones? Well, indie games in my poll are 1% in front of They're at 4% versus the 3% for multi-platform. So like, so, like, how important really is it that Switch can get that AAA support? I want it, but it's such a minuscule amount of the people that play Switch that care, as long as Nintendo is get, delivering the goods. Right. Like, in 2021, if we, if we get Breath of the Wild 2, if we get the a 35th anniversary collection, if we get Metroid Prime 4, uh, you know, we get a Pikmin 4, you know, we get a new Mario Kart, you know, we get Mario Odyssey 2. Like, they're bringing the big games. We're going to get a new Pokemon game next year, too. Like, why? Do, like, they don't have to do anything. Yeah. Because... Here's the thing. No one wants to talk about this because everyone's like, oh, so Nintendo has to respond. Nintendo has to do this. All right, Series X and PlayStation 5 release, November 10th, November 12th. Tell me. When I go take a shit, can I play, take those systems with me and play them? Nah. All right, when I go on a trip in a car or on a bus yeah. or on an airplane, can I, can no, I take those systems not. with and play them? Technically, if you want to argue, you could put together battery packs. You could. Like some crazy, <laughs> cr- crazy. Of course, good luck taking the PlayStation fucking 5 and doing that. You're going to need a whole fucking bag just for the system. <laughs> you're going to store that underneath the seat in front of you? <laughs> like, 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 I don't know how the hell you're going to be. Like, yeah, that's gonna, my carry on. You're going to have a cable running from your freaking uh, the, the top thing yeah. down and you're going to get yelled at by the flight attendants. So, right. Like, okay, like That'd realistically, realistically, these platforms don't replace what the Switch does. Like, why are we not asking, what are these systems going to do to compete with Switch? Microsoft has an answer. They have xCloud. That's their answer. We have xCloud. That's our way to compete with Switch. Why are we always asking, why does Switch have to compete with them? Switch is on pace. No. I just did a video on this. Switch's current sales pace is set to outsell the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation 4 is looking like it's going to settle in at around 110 million units. Switch is going to outsell that. Switch is on pace to sell about 120, 125 million. We're talking Nintendo Switch being on pace to be the third best-selling platform in video game history. 
right behind the PlayStation 2 and the Nintendo DS. Why are we talking about Nintendo having to upgrade their platform when most people are only buying it to play the exclusive games anyways? Yeah, I mean, to be fair... And the platforms coming out don't replace it. Like, what have, what's been the big talk about Switch's whole gen? It is the perfect companion platform to PC game. Like, right. Like, buy a PlayStation 5. You're not going to be getting rid of your Switch. When a game comes out you want to play on Switch, you're going to play it. Right. No, for sure. But to, also, to be fair, one caveat with your poll... You it's are the- you are a majority Nintendo pl- um, audience, yep. so you are going to have a little bit of skewing. Just just to be fair, to put sure. that out there, um, but yeah, no, I would agree. Your your majority are going to be probably playing Nintendo. They bought it for Nintendo exclusives. Yeah, and- like I, that's the thing. Like I always wonder, like, do they have to actually worry about it? I want them to worry about it. it do they? I want them to not worry about necessarily. It. Will they? Maybe, that that's that's the better question. Do they? Probably not. Will they? That's the that's the bigger question. Like I sit there and I look at it. You know, we got the new Nintendo 3DS, right? That was upgraded yeah. hardware, and ended up overtaking and being the, the primary selling hardware, which is exactly what Nintendo would want to happen if they released a Switch Pro right. or whatever. Right. They'd want it to become the front running platform. But I think about that new Nintendo 3DS. And yes, it had better frame rates. It had better this. And, and it was noticeable in some games, especially like Hyrule Warriors Legends. Very noticeable. But honestly, like, they could have not released that and the 3DS would have been fine, I feel. Yeah. I I just, like, I want them to do something. I think they will do something. But even if it's not that big of an upgrade, like, I just, Nintendo is kind of competing with themselves. Yeah. They don't really they have are kind of anybody. In a, like, they're in a niche area. You could argue, oh, they have phones. I'm like, yeah, but like, phones don't have physical games. They don't come with control, like physical controllers. I mean, you, you know, can. You, there you, are... you, you can't easily dock them with your TVs. I realize you have an Apple TV, you can. But like, you can't easily dock them with most TVs. You have to download separate apps and right. different things. It's a streaming, and it's not exactly the same. They're, they're doable, but they, it's a lot more work yeah, to play the games. Yeah, The Switch is like, here's the dock. You set it up one time. Just slap the Switch in. You don't have to like load an app up or stream or make sure right. your internet network's right. working or even have a Wi-Fi network to do it. It just right. works. You don't need internet to play games. That's kind of like the big thing. Like, on your phone, why don't you hit airplane mode and see how many of your games are still playable? I mean, go ahead. Go do it right now. Hit airplane mode on your phones and tell me how many of the games that you have downloaded are still usable. So many of these games that even don't have online components to them still require a connection. How do you think they're serving the ads? Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. They don't want to run if they can't make money. Right. So the Switch isn't like that. You don't have to have internet, and you can play 98% of the Switch's library. Even if you never update the games, you don't have to update the games to play them. It'll, it'll tell you, oh, an update's available. You can just yeah, ignore it and play yeah. As long as it's not an online multiplayer game, you can just ignore it and play it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just think that we don't give Nintendo enough credit for what they're doing with Switch, thinking that they need to respond. I want them to. Yes. But they don't have to. The response is, I would agree. hey, you can't play any of these over there. Hey, here's Breath of the Wild 2. You ain't playing that on Xbox and PlayStation or PC. I mean, okay, you'll play it on PC. Let's just be honest. Things are hacked. You're going to... No, yeah, yeah. It's going to happen. But, but I'm just being like, you know, you guys know what I mean. So... Uh, I I think they're going to do something because they have a history now of doing something like the, the DSi, the new 3DS, even the Wii Mini, which was more of a backwards move than a forwards move. Um, so they're going to do something. But I think these next-gen platforms um, are going in the direction of PC gaming, but doing so in a way that has some weird caveats, like the soldered on um, SSD that it, it, it's just strange. Now, granted, for the power you're getting, you can't build a gaming PC even close. They are taking massive losses on these systems to get them to us at the price points they are. But I just, it's a weird gen. Like, it's going to feel great. Launch day, beyond some launch day bugs, there'll be some cr- game crashes or, or, or whatever. Um, God, it's going to feel night and day. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to feel like when I got this giant 49-inch monitor. You, you go from, like, my Switch right now, to an Xbox Series X on the TV, it's going to be like, holy crap. Like, you you were looking earlier at some screenshots of NBA 2K21. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I've, I've seen the 4K trailer for that bad boy. Dude, NBA 2K21, I mean, my God. There are moments it looks indistinguishable from watching an actual NBA game. Right. Now, granted, right. you can still tell because some of the motions aren't exactly It's not like they changed, you know, got the got the AI motions and, and also to be a little better. That'll improve over time. But, like, just the visual aspect, you know, you're just looking yeah. at it from afar. 
dude, that looks like a fucking real game. You're right. Like no, absolutely. Shit. Yeah, there was there was plenty of like the one picture of Steph that I saw oh, coming from God, the game. Dude. It looks like Steph. I mean, you're looking at these other games, and it's you can definitely tell it's a game. But so looking like, at, if if you were, I mean, honestly, yes, you can still tell it's a game. But it it, it takes a lot longer. A lot yeah, longer to look to for, distinguish for your mind it. To like distinguish it. Like if you're if you're watching an NBA game and then you flip over quick, it'll take you a moment to be like, wait, oh yeah, this is a video. Game. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, because you'll still see like the symbols and the players that you're controlling. Like you'll notice it's like, it's just the oh, visuals right. are are, are going to be such a huge like people undermine that. Oh, I haven't seen anything that visually impressive. Well, because there hasn't been any reason to show anything visually impressive yet. Mm-hmm. You know, Demon Souls looks visually impressive. Go look at the original Demon Souls and go look at the remake. Like, holy crap, is it a night and day difference? But, like, yeah, people haven't seen the big difference. The big difference is you're going to see at launch are going to be load times. Really, Because yep. now we're getting SSD load times. So load times are going to be super quick. Um, you're finally going to probably see PC games start to take advantage of SSDs because right now PC games don't take advantage of SSDs. Fun fact, and this is something that I, we're going to see what happens. Um, there was a, a point that the new expansion pack for World of Warcraft, the Shadowlands expansion pack, was going to require an SSD. This is World of Warcraft that runs on potatoes. <laughs> it's going to require an SSD because very, very they true. wanted yeah. to take advantage of the SSD speeds for load times. Um, then they kind of backtracked and said, "Oh, no, okay. you can yeah, technically yeah, you run it the... on an HDD, but it's not going to be that great." Yeah. So, yeah. like, it's going to be interesting because mine's installed on it because that fucking game, dude, it's like two hundred fucking gigs at this point. That yeah. fucking game's so like, yeah, like. But then again, that's what Modern Warfare is almost up to. So, yeah, welcome to 4K gaming, and I'm not even yeah. gaming in 4K. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but. But to, look, look, setting aside some of the, the concerns, there's some cool things. Do quick resume that we've seen on the Xbox Series X. We have not seen the PlayStation 5 UI yet. Interesting. I don't know if you know this. We're a month out from launch. We have not seen the UI. We've not actually seen a PlayStation 5 booted up and showing much of anything. We saw some Japanese YouTubers like unbox it. But that's it. And that's like pretty much it. <laughs> like, huh. We haven't seen... Like, how are we a month out from launch and we haven't seen someone turn on a PlayStation 5 and start a game? That is a little concerning. Like, not going to lie. We're a month out. It is the the time of this, this podcast being done is on the 12th of October. One month from now, the PlayStation 5 is out and we have yet to see someone boot up a goddamn PlayStation 5. Not even Sony boot up a PlayStation 5 and launch into a game. And yet, Xbox Series X, we've not only seen it, we have media members with it showing off the UI and showing off the quick resume feature, which is a big selling point for the Xbox Series X that you cannot do even on PC hardware, really. Like, you can alt-tab out of games, but our PCs are not designed for this shit. Like, if, dude, your computer slows way the hell down, it's not good. Yeah. But the Series X and the S both have quick resume. And, like, you, it, like I think it's up to six... Xbox 360 games or like three next gen games. I don't know how many indie games got. It could probably be like a freaking 20 indie games. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Quick yeah. Resume is like you exit out of the game, kind of like you do on Switch, you hit the home button, you know? Yeah. And then you load up a new game. Well, the last game is still there, loaded in the background in, in, yeah. in the memory. And then, like, you, so you're playing this one game. Oh, you want to go over, switch back to it. Quick Resume takes like a few seconds. Boop, you're right back in the game where you left off. Hmm. Like, an amazing feature. Yeah. And so, you, like, if you're someone like me that gets frenetic, like, in streams, you guys will see me in streams, I'm like, I'll be playing Fortnite, then I want to play Splatoon, then I want to play... But imagine, that, like, I don't have to wait several minutes to get those games going. Right. You can just, a few seconds, switch. A few seconds, switch. Like, oh, I'm tired of playing this, let me switch over to this guy. Let me switch over to NBA 2K. Let me do this. Like, I can literally do a stream where I play a bunch of games and not have all this wasted time, you know, waiting for games to load. Like, it's a... It, it, it's great, you know? It's great. I, I, I just... It's something that I've never considered, um, never really truly considered uh, as something that I would care about. But I, I'm starting to to feel like this is a really killer feature for next gen. Yeah. Granted, yeah, no. maybe it kills the SSD. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> no, also possible. I have no idea. That's also possible. I don't know possible. if they're doing it on the SSD, if they're doing it in the RAM. I have no idea, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's... That could be interesting to find out. Little do we know that the SSD is only going to last a year and a half. Yeah, it's... I, I don't know, man. Um, but like I said, like, it's easy to bring up all these negatives. Like, I'm trying to think of... Like, give me some positives. What are some positives of next gen? Uh, right now. I mean, graphics 
Well, I mean, obviously, the graphics are going to be insane. I, That's with hardware that's not even out to the public yet. Right. Right. Like we're, we're not mean, talking about like the like it's literally using um, the next gen Ryzen, which comes out November fifth, and then it's using um, uh, RDNA two, which hasn't even been unveiled by AMD yet. So like it's using some cutting edge shit. Yeah. So visually, I mean, once they start so, to actually tap into it, right? It's so quite great. Question again. Um, I saw PS five can do eight K. Is that possible on the quote unquote eight K? Is so, that possible on the Xbox? They, yes, the Series X okay. and the PlayStation Five both support eight K. Okay. I think the idea though, you're not going to see a game at eight K. Right. It's I think I think I think it's more the... so like if someone wants to play a movie at 8K. Oh. Okay. And they happen to have the cutting edge 8K technology which is super expensive for TVs. Right. You could do it. I, I don't know because we're told there are only 4K Blu-ray players. I don't even know what you need to play an 8K movie. Like I don't think it's possible to do with streaming. I don't think streaming is is quick enough. Yeah. To pull off 8K. You can do 4K Netflix in streaming. Right. Which by the way, on my 4K TV I have on my wall over here, looks fucking phenomenal. Yeah. I'm surprised how amazing for like I wouldn't think it, I didn't think it was going to make a difference. All of a sudden I watch watch like any Netflix made show is it has a 4K option like holy crap. I didn't think I was going to notice a difference. I noticed a massive difference. I I I'm shocked and it would be, and apparently it's even better with 4K Blu-ray which I haven't even tried out yet. Um so like I don't even know what you need to yeah. actually play a movie at 8K. Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah, but like there isn't going to be any games that support it. Right, right. There's no. Real I just I just happened to see it though because that was one big well, thing that was on Sony's website with the thing. It was 8K, and I'm like, that's well, well, kind of what was one thing but, you noticed? Like you, you were mentioning before that most of us don't even have the televisions to take advantage. Yeah, yep. Of these um, next gen systems. Yeah, I can't remember what what God what was that? Um, the 4K and the and the stuff that these guys have. A lot of the modern TVs don't have it like the the power to the frame rate the um the 4k itself i mean yeah there's 4k tvs out there but the, the frame rate mainly well for a 4k adoption rate has been a lot slower but that's yep. because people have these 1080p panels that we spent all this money on a long time ago right and, and they like still work they still well. work really good yeah. like like technology got so good that the, the, the tvs these aren't crts they aren't dying right. right as quickly but it is true when people do buy a new tv it's like something like eighty percent of the time they buy four K because you can get four K for under three hundred at Walmart. Right. But caveat is you might get it for under three hundred, but you're only going to get sixty hertz yep. if you're lucky. Yep. Um, and you're only going to get so, so you're going to get sixty hertz, and then you're going to probably not get HDR at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know you're not going to get something like you know really good MS response time, which is important for for uh, controller lag. And then on top of that. Variable refresh rate makes gameplay so much smoother. Yeah. Most TVs don't offer variable refresh rate. Yeah. This is why some people said, oh, I'm going to plug my next-gen system into a monitor. Yeah. Like, yeah. Th- there's there's a theory that even though, like, I have this ultra-wide. There's a theory that even though this ultra-wide isn't 4K and it's only 1080p, that in theory the games will run smoother on this monitor than they ever would on this 4K TV. Yeah. I want that. That's pretty crazy. But... Yeah, no, they said, like, the to take the full advantage of the systems, you almost need the top-of-the-line brand-new TVs that are coming out for 4K and and stuff like that. So that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. To actually fully use the power of the systems. And I guess the idea is as, as the systems age and people get newer TVs, that they'll eventually be cheaper to get some of this stuff, and then it'll be like, oh, man, my system looks even better. I, the thing is... There's already people that can't tell the difference from 1080p to 4K, and I always think they're nuts that they can't tell the difference. But you know what? Some people just don't care, right? Or their vision just is that blurry that they just it doesn't really make a difference how clear you make it because they're still vi- have blurry vision. So who gives a shit? No, there's that possibility <laughs> too. <laughs> so, but like I notice the difference. Like I could tell that this is a 1080p monitor and this is a 4K monitor. I could easily tell. Like looking at you, I went up there to try to fix it to make make it so you weren't so yeah. you were like more in focus. Yeah. And like that's because on my 1080p right here, you look a little blurry, but then I look at fuzzy. me. So do I. Yeah. Look over here, man. Crystal, crystal clear. clear. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah. like. Yeah. I, I can, can tell. I can see it just even from the angle here. And this is a smaller here. monitor. Yeah. Than this one. Right. But it's so much clearer that like the pixels are way more blown up than on here. Like it's yeah. so much more condensed. Right. But 144 hertz, 30. 
Right. So, like, there's a trade-off here. Here, I'm going to get much smoother gameplay. Here, I'll get crisper gameplay. See, right, it, right. And I feel like that's what's happening with TVs right now. Smoother gameplay versus crisper. Like, a lot of TVs don't even have 120 hertz, which these systems go up to. Oh, well, and then just not only be that they have it, it's do they have the the hardware behind it to actually run at that. Yeah. There's TVs that advertise it, but then they only hit like 100 hertz. Yeah. There's actually monitors. Um, this monitor does actually hit 144. But I was reading there's a similar monitor to this uh, by Samsung because this is a Samsung because it's curved. I don't know why. The Samsung must be the exclusive makers of curved panels or something because I swear every curved panel is a Samsung. Um, but there was another model of this that I'm glad Yulia didn't pick up uh, because apparently it advertises at 144, but you can't get it to run past 120. That's Even ridiculous. though it advertises 144 because the panel supports 144, but the board and stuff behind it can't quite get quite to get it to it overheats. Yeah. Right. So it's like, oh, they can advertise. Technically, the panel passes. Yes. But you can't actually get there. So right. it's false advertising, but they get away with but it. But it's because, not because, because it's not technically right. because you're saying the panels, panels 144 hertz capable. If you read in the manual, oh, well, it's right. capable, but it's never going to get there. You, you see the asterisk that says panel, no. not not running at of course it doesn't say that on the box no 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 it's in the manual right. on the that's in the asterisk yeah. section that yeah. they put the footnotes and tiny tiny print <laughs> yeah it's it's just it's nuts um but hey you know what it's all right i think that um in general it's been uh I'm just, like, I, I don't know man there, there's a lot like the visuals are obviously the big thing yeah you know that's why anyone usually gets next gen is because they want, they want prettier games uh, to me, I'm, I'm I'm more excited not about the 4K. I'm excited about the games that are going to take advantage of the of the of the 120 hertz. Like I don't even know. If, yeah. I gotta see if this TV can do 120. I don't think it can. But like I'm I'm really excited about the idea of finally being able to play console games above 60. Now, yeah. granted, yeah. we haven't even consistently got console games at 60. Well, there is that. But like if someone wants to target 1440p on a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X and focus more on hitting 100 plus FPS. Fuck yeah, that's the sweet spot for next gen for me. Yeah, like you give me the next Call of Duty at 100 plus FPS on a console. Yeah, I'll take that over 4K any day. Yeah, any day. Like uh, ray tracing. Fuck that. Turn ray tracing off. Give me that 100 plus FPS. Like realistic lighting. That's great. But if it costs me 50 FPS, fuck you. I don't want. That. <laughs> I'd rather take the FPS. Like people are starting to realize now, like as PC gaming hardware is becoming more affordable. How, like, thank you, AMD, for making it more affordable. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, now that it's becoming more affordable, they're starting to realize that, like, higher frame rates are actually kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like, PC gamers have been saying this forever. Like, oh, we'll gladly turn on our PC settings to get, you know, 75, 100 plus FPS. Whereas I was like, oh, if you're a PC gamer, you must max out ultra everything. I'm like, no, because you have shitty frame rates. You balance your settings for good frame rates versus good visuals. And it depends right. on the game, of course. Yeah. You know, you might have a game where frame rate doesn't matter as much. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm really excited just to see multiplayer games w with a higher frame rate, mm -hmm. um, on these platforms. I'm also like, I'm waiting for the game that takes my breath away. Like Demon Souls looks really good, but it doesn't take my breath away. Maybe it's just the art direction. Cause it's more of a gloomier art direction. You know, if you ever play a Demon Souls or a Dark Souls game, it's more of a gloomier direction. Yeah. So like, it looks really, really good, but it's also, okay. It's not it doesn't bright, take my breath sunshiny away. Like, and like, wide open for, worlds. Like, I, am, I, am I basically just waiting for Elder Scrolls 6? When you walk out and see that over... Like, you know on, like, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild you go 4K, the cliff yeah. And it's like, okay, it kind of takes your breath away, but then again, I've seen games that look better. Like, so imagine, like, a game that's, like, the top tier of, of visual perfection, but in that, walking out on the cliff and just seeing all that and knowing that I can go anywhere. Yeah. Like, that's going to take my breath away. When I when I walk out right. in a world like that and I'm like, am I looking over the fucking rainforest right now? Right, in real yeah. Life? Like, holy yeah. fucking shit. Right, right, for sure. Like that, I'm waiting for that moment. And we haven't had that yet. We haven't had that yet. Uh, now, I, that moment's going to come. I, I don't know who's going to provide it first. Um, Sony seems to usually be the one that provides those moments. The Last of Us, um, you know, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um you know, Nintendo did it, pulled it off of Breath of the Wild yes. somehow. With it, it has, that art style is just perfect. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, um, you know, to see it with a with a different art style or a more realistic style, something that just takes my breath away, it's going to happen. Maybe it's Fable. There's a new Fable game being worked on. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. 
That's what I'm waiting for. I'm still going to own these systems. I'm a tech head. So yeah. I happen to be able to afford them this time around. So I'm going to get them this time around. I don't always get systems at launch. Uh, but I'm going to get them this time around. I'm going to play around with them. I'm going to have Game Pass. I'm going to, you know, get some games on the... I'll probably end up with Dark with Demon Souls. Um, just because, you know, I want something that's actually exclusive to the next gen to show off and talk about on the channel. Um, Holodex. <laughs> like, I... Oh, this is a weird thing with PlayStation 5. So PlayStation VR is compatible. Yes. With PlayStation 5. I did of course see it is. That. Of course yep. it is. But, to, but there are, there's a PlayStation 5 camera. But the PlayStation VR is not compatible with that. You must use a PlayStation 4 camera. What? So we have better technology, but you can't use it. What? You must buy PlayStation 4, 4 stuff to use it on a PlayStation 5 what? instead of the PlayStation 5 stuff, even though there's not a PlayStation 5 version of the VR yet. What? I don't, <laughs> it's just what? a weird thing these companies do. What? It's a weird gen. It's a weird generation. Well, All I can say, it's, it's just a weird generation. Well, yeah, I mean, the fact that uh, Sony doesn't even own the trademark for PS5 in India, <laughs> there's also that. <laughs> Can I care to elaborate on that one? Yeah, huh? Um, so apparently some guy in India, I this was on Android, what was the, let me credit this, uh, for where I saw it at least, Android Central. Um, yeah, the, legit, they're a good size. Yep, uh, Sony faces new setback in India. It doesn't own the trademark for PS5. Um, this is hilarious. Um, I probably will butcher the name, but it's Hatesh Aswani out of Delhi. Three months before Sony got the idea to uh, purchase the trademark for PS5, uh, he bought it. My biggest question to you, Nate, is why in the flying hell does Sony not own the trademarks for like PS1 through X? I mean, if I was Sony, I would buy PlayStation... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'd go all the way through twenty and just right. I mean, I like what's the worst? You let them expire at some. You well, don't use them. And and, and I also made are, the, by the way, trademarks are not that expensive, guys. I would also argue that you're going to pay less over the years than you are going to pay to purchase it from somebody. I mean, yeah, they're they're, they're going to have to buy the trademark from them. He's yes. not going to hand it over. No, it's kind of like patent trolls, except this person is a trademark troll. But I think trademark trolls are fantastic because. Um, I love, I love when they do this because it's on the company for screwing up. Yeah. And how is like, it, Sony it, it, knowing so, that like you're going to be... Everyone knows it's going to be called the PlayStation 5, right? There's like, yeah. the next one, guess what? It's going to be a PlayStation 6. Probably. So at this point, it'd be smart on Sony to buy the trademark for PS6. Actually, Nate, let's go see if the trademark for PS6 is out there. Let's go buy it. Yeah, let's go buy it. Let's go buy it. Let's, go buy it. let's do it. <laughs> Like I like, like I always thought it was funny because you know I have, I have the name Nintendo Prime. Like people was like, what what happens if like like Switch you know changes their online service to the Nintendo Prime online service? I'm like, well, I just shoot up in the search rankings. That's what happens, yeah, right? And then Nintendo probably sent a cease and desist to me for some reason. Although you had the name first, yeah, it, yeah. It, I'm not I'm not actually that worried about it, but oh, right. know, I could always right. change it to Ninty. I'd still show up in the search right. engine though. So. Right. Thanks, Nintendo. Please, please use Nintendo Prime and a branding somewhere. Yeah, right. I will love it. Yeah, right. I will love to get all of the all of the Nintendo fans thinking I'm legit. I already get people that think like I work for Nintendo. I don't know. But I'm like the quality of my videos shouldn't tell you I work for Nintendo. I mean, come on. <laughs> Let's just be honest. I I, I enjoy well, my content. And I do I do uh, do occasional videos that have a crap load of editing that are really good. Uh, but man, that's not that's yeah. not an everyday thing. I I was not just to, talking to Eric about this. Like, if the channel got big enough, I'd hire him as an editor or something. It's just so I could have someone else make my videos look nice, right? Because I don't have the time. Um, right. Otherwise, my videos would look nicer. Also, let's also point out the fact that we're not shy about swearing on this channel, and Fuck I'm pretty no. sure if uh, this was an actually Nintendo sanctioned channel, we would not be allowed to swear. Pretty sure I would have been fired. Yeah, probably. Long ass fucking time ago. Yeah, probably. But doesn't matter. We do our own thing here at Nintendo Prime. Yes, we do. Um, all right. Uh, anything else we want to talk about before we? God, close no. Up? I think I'm good. This was a good discussion, honestly. All right. Well, thank you guys uh, for tuning in. Uh, the audio version, as always, of our podcasts are available on all of your favorite podcast services. Pretty much everywhere. They'll be available the day after the video version. Uh, on YouTube, uh, if you are watching this or watch the whole thing on YouTube, hey, thank you so much for checking it out on YouTube. Sorry that we're not live streaming it there anymore. Uh, if you want to catch it live, be sure to check out Twitch every single Monday night. Um, yeah, that, that's about it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Nathaniel Robo Jens from Nintendo Prime. If you would like to support the podcast, 
head, head over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. A uh, bunch of different tiers. You can be on an episode for 20 bucks uh, uh, per month. Uh, let's see here. I think that's about it. Actually, I don't think there's anything else to really advertise or talk about. You guys know what's up. This is the Nintendo Prime Podcast. That's Eric Moore over there. You can find him on Twitter at emo something something. 8790. 8790. Find me on Twitter at Ninty Prime. There's also like an at Nate Jance one. I think out the red. I never use it. Yeah. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Peace out. Later.